Here we go guys, this is the hotspot node adapter, whatever you want to call it. What it actually does is uh, help you connect to um, D-Star, um, just in case you've not got a, a D-Star repeater or any kind of connection around where you live. You use a node adapter, uh, so what you actually need is a laptop or computer, then this little device, then an analog radio. I'm using a, a Kenwood a TMG 707. And then you've got your handheld or your mobile base, whatever you've got, which is D-Star. And that's it. Uh, this is uh, just to show you what uh, we're using. Uh, myself, self, M0AOV, and my friend Alan, M0AQC. He designed the box, got the box sorted out, and we got the board from America uh, ready built. We just had to put the the chip in, the pick chip, and um, program it up, so we can actually use it. So that's what it looks like now. Um, here you go. I'll just show you a little bit more. The box is quite big. And the reason why is just in case uh, we need to add any extra boards or anything, we've made it a little bit bigger, which is quite a good idea. As you can see from the back, you've got a 9-pin D-Type and the other part of the USB connection. Uh, what you need to do first is connect your 9-pin D-Type up to your radio, 6-pin uh, mini and then you sort it there but make sure your radio's got um, 9600 board packet mode and switch it into the 9600 packet uh, board packet mode just so you're up and done and ready and you don't forget it so you've connected that up then run your laptop computer whichever one it is a little bit tricky uh, because the the interface or the software or whatever it is some of them don't actually like some computers. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes not. If it doesn't work, then just try a different computer. Um, myself and Alan, we tried it on um, three of his computers, two laptops and one normal computer, and it didn't work. He made an old um, computer back up, and that works fine, no problem at all. So really, you just have to check and uh, see which computer will actually work your interface. Um, it's quite hard just getting everything sorted and set up and all your commands. We'll do that in another uh, little video. Uh, but this was just to show you the interface that we've actually got. It's quite nice and neat. There it is, nice and small. And on the front, you've got your cars, power, PTT. Uh, what you next do, once everything's connected to the radio part, connect your lead up to your laptop or computer. So once you've done that, and turn your computer on, go it up and running, you'll probably, more than likely, get your power come up, power light, which is in the middle there. Or, as well, you could get your cos light come up. It just depends. Like I say, it's uh, a little bit finickety, um, getting everything sorted. But um, if you do get any problems, um, undo the connection on the back of the radio from USB lead, and then just push it back in, and more than likely your cos light might go out. Uh, then you just need to run your software uh, for the node adapter to get it all up and running. So run the software, and uh, in the middle, it'll just say whether it has actually found um, your interface which is your node adapter. Once it's found that then you're way up and running. Um, in one of the next little videos I'll go on about um, how you set the software up just to give you an idea. Um, you do need to do some jumper settings and that on the, the board itself. SW1, SW2 and SW3. Um, on those it just depends what the files say. 
um, how your radio needs to be set and your interface just so we can talk to each other needs to be inverted not inverted and all the rest of it but we'll go through that on the next one just with some files okay so there you go you've seen our interfaces our boards and the boxes we've got it in really nice cool blue so it looks really nice if you didn't want to put the LEDs at the front you could leave them on the board and then you'd see the flashing inside the box itself and that's it for now hope you enjoy yourself from M0AOV